Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I'm of the stars. There is something I should explain about the Martian worldview prior to the time when um, the space station went down. And my understanding of it is this, that in achieving great micro-miniaturization, they lost contact with, with the larger world. And it had many advantages because they could pack a lot of population into a planet um, that way. But the disadvantage was that they, they longed for communication with Mars and they no longer had that communication. They were kind of double layered into various life forms on the planet, you see. And so they lost communication. <clears throat> um, now the demon realm the, that existed on Earth and now is not like active on Earth. It's, it's, it's grown very small, uh, physically, astrally, physically very small because of the expansion of Earth. But back then there were demons everywhere on Earth and devils and like that. Astral beings, negative, right? <clears throat> and these beings are known to lie quite, quite a bit. Lying is their stock in trade. And they're very good at deceiving people, and they deceive the Martians. Not just humans, but also Martians. You know about how humans are deceived into deals with the devil. Well, this happened with the Martian population as well. The demon population, the devil population on Earth, it knew that how the longing of the Martians to communicate once more with their home world. It had been, after all, four billion years, and they did not know what had happened to their planet. They still had a social memory of their planet, and, and, but they, there was this huge gap in time. They were, oh, already inhabiting the human colon, right? And, and the demon world knew this, and it knew that they had intelligence that could be employed as a counter-agent against the human intelligence, right? So the demon world said, we will put you in communication with Mars, with your home world, with the directorship there, as it were. Uh, if you do what we say, if you do what you can to confound the, the human beings, to, to just do what we say as far as in making their gut brains behave very negatively, right? And so out of this longing to communicate with their home world, the very wise, um, beings of Mars fell to this ploy of the negative astral entities and became their allies. So this was to be accomplished by means of neg speak that would be transmitted through the gut brain of one human being to the gut brain of another. And in fact this is what happened. A couple of the campaigns that were uh, promoted very successfully through the demon um, Astral Negative Martian Alliance were, uh, over the last few years, um, the V hyphen 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 D hyphen 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 mental filter, which had to do with, with uh, promiscuous sexuality, and the F U in the A dot dot H dot dot dot. Um, mental filter, which had to do with transmitting hatred through uh, through uh, sexual intercourse. From the perspective of the astral beings negative, the, their uh, insistence on that that slogan and the following one about F U in the A H uh, had to do with trying to uh, trying to to spread the AIDS virus all over Earth, and that their intention was to, to, to cause intense suffering, which they love dearly. That's their love, is hate. And so their intention was to wipe out the population of Earth. And that is not something that they told the Martians. And typically, that's the way they work, you know. If you ever come across one, you'll never get the truth. So the deal that was cut was that the astral negative world would 
enter the human bloodstream. And as I understand it, at this point in time, totally imperfect understanding that I have, uh, this was accomplished through human beings who are what is called hybrids. Now hybrids, uh, I know there's stories about gene splicing and so forth, and this may have occurred in order to make them more suitable vehicles for the negative energies of the astral negative world. Uh, so in whatever way it was done through the samskaras, through the gene splicing, which are essentially the same thing, there are human beings on Earth that are far more negative uh, in orientation, more inclined toward service to self than most human beings. These numbers are few as far as the true despots of service to self are concerned. Uh, so, but these, these beings, um, through their alliance through the, with the astral world, have uh, been lent great astral powers. And one of those is, is the yogic superpower described in the aphorisms of Patanjali to do with micro-miniaturization. They can project their consciousness to the level, subatomic level, or the atomic level. They can project their consciousness into the bloodstream of other people. They can subject other people to their will through obsession, as described in the text on theosophy. And they can keep them in that state of, essentially that state of stasis, and mind control them into thinking that they are those beings circulating in, in the blood of someone that they want to turn to the astral negative. Assisting them in this is the Martian Alliance, which longed for news from home. In actuality, what was happening was that intel was going either through the obsessionary channel or through direct from the hybrids, through the bloodstream of the human being and up to the crown chakra once a month during the full moon. And somehow this information was getting to, from the crown chakra of the person, to what they called moon base. It's been written up in the Ascension Glossary that moon base was a reptilian base, actually. Uh, 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 a place for negative energies to impact Earth. Um, and so, essentially, putting all this together, I view uh, what was essentially uh, complete control, really, of the mind control of the population of humankind and filtering down also to the Martian uh, population of Earth uh, that was taking place through a central command at moon base for, for, for a long time during the last age of darkness. And this collapsed in, in the early 2010s. Uh, now, <clears throat> the Martian alliance with the astral beings negative no longer exists because these are no longer a force in the world. The hybrids are, are all hiding out and hoarding art and, and like gold and things of that nature, thinking that they may live much longer. Um, the theory that they have is that they have no soul. In fact, the truth of the matter is, as I understand it, that they do have souls, but that these souls cannot enter the human vehicle until the etheric net and the samskaras, the genus, are repaired. Okay, um, Because the human vehicle of the person known as a hybrid right now is, is, in, is too is too damaged, the light is too damaged for the soul to step into it. Along these lines, I'd like to state that this is a very normal thing for a soul when the human body is in, unable to step into it. For instance, as I understand it, uh, it was from a gentleman who had recent experience with the Davic uh, kingdom incarnation. It was terrific inform information. And he observed it in his wife while she was pregnant and after she had her child, their child was growing. What he observed is that um, that their, the soul of their child 
was standing by and and hovering over and patiently caring for the 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 body of his infant child as it was nurtured in the womb and for some years thereafter until the physical body had the um, the everything in place for the soul to step into it. At that point then, the body wasn't sold. So you see, um, the hovering over of the soul and the watchful uh, separateness of the soul is a natural thing for the human form until it reaches a certain uh, stage of its, of its growth. And in the same way for the hybrids, because they are born with this greatly damaged um, uh, network of light, uh, the soul waits patiently. I can offer this solace that the soul is waiting patiently for their DNA repairs, which may commence next year. All right. So the, their lack of ensoulment and their need for um, blood sacrifice and so forth, human blood, are fictions told to them by the demon realm and reinforced by samskaric um, distortions of the light, which are clearing now. Uh, in case they have any question, the hybrids, uh, regarding need for hemoglobin, I suggest trying chlorophyll, which is a chemical very similar in nature to hemoglobin and which may act as a proper substitute until the clearings of light take place for them. Now, so getting back to the Martians, I feel that the Martians have also been misled by the astral beings negative. For instance, they thought that our human bodies that they inhabit were space stations, and they are not. They're living on Earth. They thought that the moon was Mars, and the Mars is, is, is a totally different situation. They thought that they were in touch once a month with Mars, with their, with their cherished homeworld, and that is not so. And these were the reasons why they agreed to the alliance with, with the astral beings negative. So a, a long and patient period needs to take place in which this assimilation of the difficulties that they've encountered uh, with regard to the truth sinks in. And the same for us. For the Martians are a great and ancient and wise race that is our ally, our ally in the ongoing awakening process. And will, once, once their own distortions of the light are cleared, will no doubt lead uh, us into the light. I feel that for sure. And, and be our, our patient and kind friends in the search for ever-increasing soul awareness. Uh, so here are a few more thoughts on that topic of uh, an alliance between astral negative and Mars in our human bodies. Um, it is possible that there are hybrids. Here's the third possibility. It is possible that the Martian bacteria inhabiting the human colon have bioengineered some bacterial-looking organisms that are really servo mechanisms that bring in the signal of the astral negative to inside the human body and cause illness and death eventually. Um, my understanding is that the Martians did not understand this aspect of these hybrid bacteria inside of us, and that they're as uh, aghast at it as I was to think of it. And so um, I suggest it, and I suggest you suggest as well, that if these hybrids were bioengineered into the Martian population, the Martian colonists, then they might be bioengineered out. And what this might result in is the 90,000-year life expectancy that is mentioned in the Law of One as being that of the astral realm, where we are now. Uh, so, I, my guess is that the um, 
what's it called, the piece of goods that was sold to the Martians in this regard was that these, um, these hybrid beings, which they say we have them surrounded, <laughs> um, that, that these hybrid beings were supposed to be the communicators, the astronauts and communicators that allowed them to communicate with Mars um, on the full moon from the crown chakra. But that in, in actuality, they were allowing the astral negative beings to, to dip into the human aura and uh, like feast on the negativity there. Um, so the purpose of having hybrids, uh, bacterial hybrids within the blood would be um, to try to change the uh, human electromagnetic field to such a flavor, such a like a hateful flavor, or this uh, quark, change the quarks to such an extent that they would be edible by the demon world. <laughs> and so... This would be something that the Martians would have been unaware of till now. So if you speak with them about it, please be gentle about it. You'll find they can be quite reasonable when they are apprised of the facts of their situation. Um, there's a little bit more information I'd like to relate with regard to the hybrids on Earth may be related to the Anunnaki tales or the Anak tales as described in um, in uh, The Law of One. There was a story in the early 2000s that there were like a population, a dwindling population of hybrids or maybe Anunnaki or Anaks who uh, are maybe reptilian, I don't know. I don't know too much about Yet the negative side. Um, anyway, there was this group that that needed to return from Earth to the Moon because they knew that the ascension process and the awakening were going to be happening, and they didn't think they'd make the cut. They wouldn't make the grade, so they needed to be off Earth during that time. Ah, uh, so this fits in with the notion of the miniaturized hybrids a little, because I can't think of any other way to explain it. Uh, as I understand it, there were three like primary beings on Earth, not probably astral, probably astral, not human in form and in nature, who stepped into, walked into various human forms as they wished for a long time setting the souls aside and walking into those forms, and then through their habits eventually destroying the human form and moving on to another one. Or they could replicate like a holographic display of a human being that to most people appeared to be normal but lacked a soul and was really in fact just like a, a, a 3D motion picture. I've seen such a thing. Um, so there were these beings that could do these things. As to what they really were, I don't know. Um, so amongst them, there was this story in the early 2000s when they heard about the awakening of getting off Earth through... Uh, there were two beings that talked to me who I think were brother and sister, but for some reason married in some way, in like a mythological way maybe, who had been on Earth, ransacking Earth in this way of moving from soul to soul for a long time, like lions that had gone mad, sort of, or lion cubs gone mad. Um, and um, <clears throat> the, the story that they had was that if they slept with a, a human person, the, a woman, then they had to kill her because otherwise the gene line would be distorted which doesn't make any sense if they were astral. But that was their myth. They had to kill any human woman that they slept with. Uh, so they kept mainly to themselves and did blood sacrifice in order to survive. That was also part of their myth, that they needed all this extra blood. But it was, in fact, just part of their soul wounding. So... 
So, so the story is that the father of these two uh, was one of those selected to go on a spaceship. And the spaceship was going to the moon, and it was carrying like human hosts as like those that they would eat. If these were micro-miniaturized like hybrids, then that would be an interesting prospect because they like the idea of being in human blood and having a lot of it around them. If they were in the human bloodstream, that would be like a slam dunk for them. Otherwise, it doesn't make much sense to me. So the sad story I got is that these two, these siblings, were not among those chosen because they were half-breeds, but the father was. And so for a long time, I waited for news about this spaceship, which I didn't see in the news. And I heard m much later that it was destroyed en route by the sun and the whole thing like incinerated. So there is that, which I have no context to convey with. And I just, it's out there. <laughs> and the other story I have about these two is that possessed as they are of immense psychic powers, And if, in fact, they are not sold. Um, they appear to be like semi-eternal figures on the landscape of this planet uh, that represent, in my mind, um, Archangel Michael as a fallen angel. It's kind of the, the shadow of darkness that comes over this planet during the long ages of darkness. And the other, the woman, as the shadow, the opposite of Christ, the shadow of the Christ um, consciousness that comes over the planet during the age of darkness. So the angelic and the, um, the beings of light shadow side that somehow overtakes this planet during that time. And uh, I expect these two in the coming great age, which is the beginning of a giant great age, to be transformed once more into the truly great magnificence of Archangel Michael and the truly great magnificence of Christ consciousness. That's how I see that. As to their father, the being that sometimes described in their myth as being on the moon and sometimes as being near them but not with them on earth, uh, maybe this is the um, shadow side of the notion of God the Father, the creator who also creates dark, you know, the original thought that, that moves out into the duality play of, of creation. And so, so maybe that figure will also lighten up and become more like the Creator God, more like the Elohim, more like the Christian notion of God the Father in the coming age. This is the only context I have for this is that there's a myth of darkness out there, a trinity of darkness, that it's like uh, the planet uh, Nibiru. N how do you say it? I don't know. It's like the notion that there's a shadow planet tracking and stalking Earth. And in the same way, there is this notion of the shadow trinity, the shadow of of the Hindu trinity and of the Christian trinity that's sometimes made flesh, apparent flesh, in the form of hybrids, and sometimes standing off in the fourth dimension, you know. The things I don't know about this could fill a lot of books. Uh, since these, whatever they are, hybrids in our blood or several mechanisms, Martian hybrids, I don't know, demon realm entities, uh, are intended to produce disease and death in, in, in the human form. I feel that 
we could be of assistance to the Martians in eliminating them. They can work through their genetic research, uh, their bioengineering, and we can assist through, through proper diet, through proper hydration techniques, through good rest and getting plenty of exercise, and through meditation. In other words, through a very healthful lifestyle, we could eliminate these hybrids in our, in our own blood. It stands to reason if they were placed there so as to injure our health, that healthful lifestyle will help to eliminate them. Another form of, of human Martian alliance in terms of uh, physical health of the human body. So that's it for now. Y'all take care.